Hi everyone and welcome to the Garden of Dogs and Cats. So I'm super excited to uh, bring this video to you guys. Sorry for my attire, it's like 10 o'clock at night right now while I'm recording this. And I am still in the process of setting up my third terrarium. Um, so I am going, this video is all about how I built my um, 18 by 18 by 24 terrarium. Um, and I did a DIY background and planted it and everything. And I, um, this video is about how I did that. Um, this is also an update video because obviously I'm not um, in the same location as some of my previous videos. And then also it's obviously been quite a while since I've done a video. So um, I still have plants as you can see. But um, also now in my life I have a gargoyle gecko who just turned a year old in October named Mushu. And I have a Madagascarian giant dega gecko named Miko. Um, and then I am currently setting up a third bioactive enclosure um, that is not quite finished yet for a unknown gecko. I haven't decided whether I'm going to get another gargoyle, another day gecko, or get a crested gecko. I'm thinking about getting a crested gecko because I've never owned one before. I did a gargoyle gecko first because I've wanted one since I was 10 years old. Um, so yeah, I guess, um, thank you for watching. Sorry I'm talking <laughs> so much. Um, I also have an Instagram, um, that I will link in the comment section below or whatever in my description of my video. Um, so you guys can follow me on Instagram because that's where I'm mainly active a lot, especially when it has to come with, comes to the geckos and my plants and doing my build outs. Also, that's my, uh, almost nine year old dog Diesel back there. Casually climbed on my bed, giving me dirty looks. <laughs> um, so anyways, yes, I guess, um, let me go ahead and show the finished products. Now, Miko's cage is fully bioactive, but Miko's cage is actually Mushu's old cage. And when I originally got Mushu, I just set up the bioactive really quick and got him in the cage. So I didn't really do a background build or anything. So I knew with the next two terrariums I built, especially for Mushu's permanent enclosure, which is the 18 by 18 by 24, I really wanted to have a DIY background so it looked like, you know, a fake rock wall. And so I could use a lot more of the arboreal space and put sticks and stuff for him to be on since he is an arboreal um, gecko. Um, now, Miko, I did change out the enclosure a lot for Miko since giant day geckos do need a little bit more of a basking area and they prefer more sticks and branches and stuff to be on. So I did adjust his, the bioactive enclosure and that I just basically kind of added some more plants, took some cuttings of stuff that I added and then just moved some of the plants that were already in there around. Um, so that's what I did with Miko's enclosure. So it's nothing fancy. There is a fake rock background that I built um, out of foam, the foam you'll see me use in the video on Mushu's enclosure. Um, I made a fake wall out of it that I put in the enclosure that Miko's in. Eventually I will break down that enclosure um, once Miko goes into his permanent enclosure, which will be a similar size to the one Mushu's in. Um, but that's going to be at least another year because Miko's Probably only three to four months old. He's a very, was very, very tiny when I've gotten him and he's gotten a little bit bigger, but he's still a very small gecko. And considering that they can get up to a foot, um, he's got a lot of growing to do. Um, so I guess let me turn my camera around really quick and show y'all the enclosures finished as they look right now. So this is Miko's enclosure. I run it, I'm running a CAT and then this is a grow light um but i am going to be also getting him a uvb because i just read a new study about giving uvv during the daytime to nocturnal geckos or cryptascular geckos so this is his enclosure hi mumu so this is mushu's by the way, for anyone wondering, this is the Thrive from PetSmart 18 by 18 by 24 um, terrarium. And then over here is Miko's enclosure. And now Miko just got moved into this enclosure. So I'm not going to open the door. Um, only because um, I don't want to stress him out anymore. Um, he literally just got moved into this enclosure tonight. 
Um, because Mika's, uh, Mushu's been out of it for about a month now. So, you guys see his little tail up there. And, as you can see, he's just got a ton of branches, not so many plants as Mushu. And then that's the fake wall back there. And his little feeding ledge. And then he's got some dowels right now until he can go source more branches. Okay, so basically in these two photos right here, I'm just showing you what my layout was in my mind. And then um, this right here, I'm just showing the items I'm going to be using, which is going to be great stuff gaps and cracks. You can also use great stuff pond liner. Um, and pretty much any, I guess, like polyurethane foam that is, um, doesn't have any, like, mold or mildew resistance. Um, so here I'm just going ahead and I am spraying the foam. Literally, you are going to cover everything you want held in place with foam. Um, any gaps, any kind of cracks, anything like that under your wood, or around the planters in this case that I'm putting in place, you want to make sure is filled. You want to make sure there is no possible way for the animal you're going to be putting in this terrarium to get into a space and get stuck in this foam or behind the foam and behind the glass and then get stuck. So you just want to make sure that all your gaps and gaps are covered. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop talking and speed this up and let y'all enjoy watching me finish this terrarium and put it together. And I will be talking a little bit through the different steps because I did not record any of this until I did not say anything about what I was doing in any of these steps. So. So here's what the finished um, foaming looks like. Um, as you can see, everything is completely covered. And something I did forget to mention is that I shoved paper towels in each of the planters in order to keep foam from coming into the holes through the planters. So that way I could actually make them removable. Um, and then just this, this is some pictures of it um, finished. And then this is a video of your next step. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm actually removing the planters from the foam um, and it does take me a minute because these guys were actually fairly stuck but I was able to get them because they were plastic it could kind of be bent and squeezed I was able to get them out so they were removable like I wanted for this project and here I'm just showing you what I had um, planned to use to carve I will tell you right now do not just go in with a regular razor blade um, please do yourself a favor and just go ahead and get yourself the, um, window scraping blade. Um, I think mine was like four bucks and honestly, it was way better than using a regular razor blade and the X-Acto knife for this. Um, also I've seen people recommend using a Dremel and other things like that for the foam. Now, I didn't read about using a Dremel until after I had, but personally I just used the little window scraper with the blade on it and it worked fine for me um, so that's what I recommend and here I am here I am using that little window scraper blade I referred to earlier now I did realize in the process of reusing this it's actually better to kind of like um, shimmy it along like you would if you were actually carving something versus like gouging in with it so that's the only um, recommendation I could use kind of just like take little slithers at a time with this um, now they did have a slightly larger one that would probably work better um, and then here I just painted it with black acrylic paint and then I didn't realize until halfway through that you guys couldn't see what I was doing in this part. But in this part, I was actually taking a paintbrush covered in silicone and I was um, painting the edges of the foam with it because this is the next step. What you're next wanting to do is you're going to want to take 100% silicone. Make sure if you're getting the GE silicone, it is the silicone one, not the silicone two 
or that you're using aquarium safe silicone. And what you're going to do is work in very small sections and then you're going to take dirt and you're going to press that dirt into the silicone onto the foam until you get full coverage of all around the foam. And this is at the point that I realized that I have not spoke about what I am even the type of dirt I am pressing into the silicone. So this is a mixture of cocoa core, orchid bark, um, repta bark, and moss. Um, and then some leaves I buy that are literally just sold as um, leaves. That's what they're sold as. They're sold as leaves. Um, I'll put the links below to everything that I use and bought for this terrarium. Um, but then I'm just showing here the finished product with all the dirt and everything on it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to wait at least 24 hours before setting that right side up. And then after 24 hours, you're going to at least give it a few days. You want to wait preferably until the silicone smell is completely gone before you start these next steps. Then what you're going to want to do is put about two to three inches of Leca Hydro Balls, however you find it in your um, in the bottom, and then you're going to want to put some kind of screen to protect your dirt and Leca from merging, and what this creates is a false bottom for your soil. Um, in the previous section I just showed I was showing that I won't be using the blue daytime heat bulb but I will be using the UVB light that came with the terrarium and then now I'm just showing all the plants I picked out to put into the terrarium for the actual um, planting um, for the soil mix I'm going to be using a similar soil to what I used on the background which is just cocoa core repta bark orchid bark um, horticultural charcoal, a little bit of topsoil, and then just some moss and again some leaves. Um, and then I also took some branches that I had um, sourced and I broke those up and added a little bit of branches. And what you don't see me add are my springtails that I had in another container that I was growing out. And I have not added isopods to this terrarium yet um, because I just had to go buy some. The gecko that went in this terrarium isn't a bug eater or he isn't prone to eating bugs. So I'm not too worried about putting isopods in his terrarium. So yeah, enjoy um, me finishing planning this. So I didn't record it, but actually every single one of these plants, I completely bare rooted them um, because you don't want any of the dirt that they came with in the store. And then all I'm doing is actually just building dirt, more dirt up towards the back than the front of the terrarium. Um, that way I'm able to plant stuff on different levels and kind of have different sized plants and everything. So right now that's all I'm doing is kind of building that dirt up. I want to make sure it builds all the way up to the bottom of that background I made. And then I'm going to begin planting it.
I want to thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope that this helped you or at least inspired you to make your own DIY background build for your animals. Um, and this is just my build is coming to an end now and I just really wanted to thank you guys all for your support and I really look forward to seeing your own builds um, on Instagram. Please tag me. I Like I said, I will leave my Instagram in my description box as well as everything I used and where I got things for this build and just thank you guys so, so much and I really hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks guys.